Hey there guys, it's me Malorian. It's time for not just one, but two battle reports. Uh, basically, this last week here, they had the latest CID that came out with all the new steamroller stuff. So we got three new scenarios, we got objectives with three new powers, and I really wanted to test them. And one in particular was the whole one was like super incursion. It's like incursion with the three flags before, but now with more scenario things. And along with that, if I'm going to be pushing a scenario play, I got to bring back the Thexas. So honest, I've been having a lot of people ask me about tips about Cephalix. And I haven't actually been playing much Cephalix lately. It's actually, I've been doing a lot more McBain and Magnus 2 and just some other casters like that. But really the Cephalix, I have, it's been a little while since I played them. So it was nice to, to pull these guys out again. Now, my first opponent here will be Chris Johnstone. He used to play a lot, was a very competitive player, but hasn't played for a while. So I going into this, I know I do have the advantage that he might not have uh, the full knowledge of all the new upgrades and blah, 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 might, might make a few mistakes. But at the same time, I know him as a super assassination player, so I have to play very, very carefully. Uh, one thing that is going to be a proxy in this one is that the storm wall is actually going to be a hurricane. Not a big deal, but there you go. So in this one here, I mean, it's... This one's called, I believe, Anarchy or something like that. Uh, it's funny, we have one local person that's like, I don't like it, it's all off kilter. But I mean, really, we have other ones like that already, right? Like, spread the net, it's already kind of like offset. It just kind of like flip-flopped where the zones are. So, you know, it's, it's, it's no big deal. Pretty much what this one wants you to do is go wide, have infantry on the outside, and then fight over the center here. But along with that i mean these flags are fairly close so it's going to be very difficult to be like contesting and clearing your own flag so i think overall it's going to be bigger for controlling the zones on the outside but we're going to kind of see how that goes now uh there are three new versions for the objective you can now also have it so that it gives you oh what was it no pushing and another one lets you re-roll uh, to hit and to damage once per turn and then there's another one that i also oh yeah isla sight for a model for a turn so all that being said you know me and my opponent said we'd rather have the one that repairs you so you know something that repairs you is pretty nice and safe uh, of course i don't need any of the other variants in this maybe pathfinder for that water but even then meh not the biggest worry uh so of course what is my game plan going to this is i want to run up i want to be jamming him and then just kind of winning on scenario now the biggest thing i gotta watch out for is his super fast jacks in that feat you know Haley too is not what she used to be but she's still very dangerous and if she says your caster can't really do anything or the jacks it means that those like the big uh hurricane is getting the alpha on you and that can be really bad so i'm gonna be holding back hoping to pull up the feet and then i can hopefully then come around from there so that's what i basically do i won first turn i'm running up uh i didn't really pay much attention to the fact that oh yeah the hurricane can be a little bit faster if you give it you know the the whole you go faster and get an extra attack type thing so it's a little bit of derp on my side but for the most part i'm just making sure i'm staying out of ranges and getting ready to, to flood the board later so that's what he does he gives a hurricane it's a little bit faster a little bit more shootier so it goes up it shoots down a couple of my guys okay that happens he boosts kills off one of the overlords okay sure i mean really that's what's probably going to happen at some point anyway that he goes and like rolls a scatter on my stealth overlords and kills one so eh, even though i lost some things here it's not really a big deal now another thing i'll really say from how things are looking here is that i'm not really thinking i'm going to be scoring on the right zone at all taking out that big huge hurricane i could maybe normally do that but it's really a hard thing to do around the feet the biggest thing i think i can do is that if he has the centurion locking down one zone the hurricane on the other i should have a lot better chance of just scoring on that center flag and i think if nothing else maybe clocking my opponent as well but the big thing that's going to be really helping on the left is that those jacks there are both on a, a junior so of course there's kane zero running ace uh, the centurions on junior and he got a little too close to the side and my ambushers are going to be coming in right now so if i can just go after the juniors well the jacks will just go in inert anyway so i might be scoring on the left but it's not really something that's critical to my plan 
So on my turn, the ambushers come in, they kill both Ayanna and Holt, so that's great, because now it's going to make my little ghosty ghosts just that much more safe. Uh, and then otherwise, I'm able to get some really good damage into Ace, not actually taking out his system though, so that sucked, but it is really hurt. Uh, otherwise, you know, my overlords are normally being used for something to go up and spray. Nah, they're on jam duty. So I got two of them that ran up on the right side that blocked the hurricane. On the left, three of them are pinning in the Centurion, which currently is not in the zone. And then basically again, just running up. I put a one of my machine wraiths already on my flag. And the other machine wraith, I decide to really just push up there. Uh, why I really want to be like that is it's somewhere that is contesting that flag, but also really threatening to be doing some annoying things with his thorn. Thorn can be a very dangerous piece and something that really enables his assassination game. So if I can get rid of that early, that's fantastic. Uh, being in there and being in cover makes me pretty good. I mean, if he boosts, he has a pretty good chance of getting me as well. But it's really a play to really try and take out Thorn. So on his turn, though, he is able to take it out. I mean, Haley just does an arcane bolt, boost to hit, missed, but reroll because of Squire. Got it. Otherwise, it's really just kind of like shooting around and doing his thing. Now, again, as you can see there, I'm staying back with acceleration up. I'm staying pretty safe. And so he didn't really feel that he had a good shot at assassination. And he didn't really feel he had a good spot to set himself up to really come at me either. So this is fantastic. He pops his feet. Anywhere we see those little digging tokens, that's what he's locking down. So things like my heavies, some of the unit leaders, a lot of the stuff on the left side to kind of keep them away from the juniors. That's what he really went after. Uh, he also TK the Centurion inside the zone. So that's what he's going to be doing here. And this is so far going perfect for me because this means that I'm going to be scoring my flag on his turn. And even though he was able to kill a machine wraith, so I can't really get to his thorn that easily, that's fine. I'm just going to keep on jamming, keep on killing, and uh, keep on working on this scenario advantage with a backup of also the time advantage. Uh, kind of a crummy picture for this one, and I'll also say this is also skipping a turn because there was one picture so fuzzy, I was like, I shouldn't even keep this. It's weird. I got a new phone with a new camera that I thought I'd be doing great, but apparently I need to be still doing a little bit more work with it. So apologies for that, but basically what happened on my turn is that I adrenal flooded some dudes. They went up. They killed off Kane Zero, so that's great. Uh, Ace goes inert. Uh, I still have to deal with that Centurion. Couldn't get to the Junior yet. Uh, starting to also bash on his objective, but for the most part, it's really just like jam, jam, hold away. Uh, I go up to two to nothing. On his turn, he's able to zap my machine rate that was on my flag, so that's going to make things a little bit more difficult, locking down the shooting. But again, I'm still up two nothing, still up clock. All of his things are kind of really staying back there. I'm staying safe, so this is really going according to plan. So on my next turn here, I feel that the way I'm going to lose this game is by assassination. So I need to just kind of like move away and move safe. So I'm still trying to hunt down Junior, still trying to work on that objective. I mean, it's just really just kind of like grinding away for stuff that doesn't really matter. Uh, the biggest thing to me is just making sure I don't get assassinated. So like on this turn here, I didn't score any points. I could have like ran up one of my agitators. I could have scored my flag. I don't need to. I'm in the lead. I'm not in a spot where I need to be losing that. I mean, if he does stomp over here somehow with his hurricane, I need the hitting power to take it out. So it's one of these things where it's like, hey, I could be getting more points, but I don't have to. So what he decides to do then is he sees he's in a really bad spot here, goes for an assassination, uh, basically comes over here with Haley and then starts trying to shoot arcane bolts at me. But I knew that there's probably like the last spot where Haley might decide to go for it before I run to the other side of the forest. I'm fully camped, not really worried. Uh, he goes for it and uh, yeah, just, it just does not happen. And really at that point, that's when he kind of like throws in a towel and says, all right, I think we're good here because Haley's going to die or I'll just run and keep on drawing this out. He's, he's just not in a spot right now where he's going to pull off any sort of victory because I think from all of his arcane bolts, he did like, four five maybe damage so just really not what he needed so first scenario here first go back here with texas looking great but we got one more game and then i'll really talk about what i think about these new scenarios 
So game number two, this is the one that is the super incursion. This is the one I really wanted to test. And I'm up against my buddy Daryl running my own list here. Well, not my own list, my own model. So he really wants to try playing some mercenaries and specifically Ashlyn. So he let me know like, oh, can you get these models together for me? I was like, yeah, no problem. So if they look familiar, that's because they're mine. Now, again, there'll be one proxy. I still don't actually own Elish, so I'm using the Steelhead arcanist instead so that's the one thing to look at so now his list has you know a couple more heavies than i do it has these mules i gotta really work out look out for uh the cav is interesting it does have grievous crit grievous so that's kind of annoying the biggest thing for me though is that they'll be hard to remove because first of all they're gonna have quicken so they're hard to spray down with really high defense 17 and then once they get into me it's probably going to be on feet turn so hitting defense 17 when you're rolling four dice dropping the two highest not the easiest thing to do so i think overall what i'm going to try and do here is same type of thing i always go is go for a scenario uh i'm not really sure if he's the guy i can really clock but i think this is something where i can push scenario and keep on pushing it pushing it now while i'm trying to keep on talking about that uh he does actually go for the objective that makes it so i can't push one model and i think that's okay because really if there's one model that i can't push with my feet or place with a tk well i can always just kill it with my jacks so i'm not really feeling too bad so on my turn because i get to go first again which is amazing i run up i do deceleration blah 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 same type of thing on his turn, he's not really all that aggressive. He slowly moves up. Uh, he already puts out the thing on the one jack saying how I can't push it. Uh, but the other thing is because this is Leilis, he also has choir back there. So he also makes it so all the jacks I can't cast spells on. And that really makes me think of some of the problems I'm going to run into. Uh, he also has quicken over already as well. But the biggest thing is that a lot of my control with like TKing and stuff like that won't be possible. So I'm already thinking that that will be a little bit of an issue, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So going into this next turn, it's not a turn where I can score already. So I'm not going to be feeding yet, but I just need to kind of like get into a spot that is going to set him up so that I can feed on him later. So holding him back so I'm in a good spot to come after him after. So part of that is on the right side, I bring in my ambushers and they get all over them. I get really, I get a shot here. I get one onto Gaston. If I would have actually like spiked my dice, that would have killed off that junior, that would have killed off the mule that he's running, would have been amazing. But otherwise, meh, whatever. The right side's really bogged down. I was really careful not to trigger any of his uh, counter charges. Tried spraying down some things, didn't really work and then otherwise set myself up for next turn. Now, the real dumb thing I did is put out my machine rates already because normally it's not so bad because, hey, I'm out there and uh, if you don't come in and contest, then I'm going to score. But the thing is, on the left side, he's going to score anyway, or sorry, not score, he's going to contest anyway. So having that there is just really having it so it has a chance for Elish to take it out. And the same thing on the right side. He has a lot of magical guns that even though they're tied up right now, there's ways he could unlock them. So I'm really putting myself in danger for no good reason. And along with that, I semi-pay the price. Uh, he is able to free up one of his uh, Thorn Gun Mages on the right. And because this is his feet turn, he was able to shoot it down. So there's a dumb move on my part. Uh, on the left side, Elish does go for me, but luckily has really crappy dice and fails to kill me. So that's something. Uh, meanwhile, you know, because the way this is set up, it's not really too bad. Uh, Ashlyn is feeded. There's these guys in my face. Uh, here's one interesting thing, though. The Toro that is closest to the middle flag. That's the one I can't push from the objective. And so you would think, like I just said, I'll just charge in there and kill it. However, it also has admonition, which I could hex blast off except the choir said I can't cast spells on it. So it's an interesting counter, counter, counter game that he has the advantage on. So seeing that, I think that's okay. I'm going to leave the middle flag alone, bog things down. But what I'm actually going to do is use my feet to pull his 
Cav on the left, away from Ashlyn, so I can get in there, boost a hit, wipe them out, setting myself up to score on the outer flags. So that's going to be my plan, not the center so much, the outer flags. So that's what I do, I feet, I pull them in, go in there, wipe them out. I, I didn't really need to, but because I was able to pull in the Talon as well, I was like, ah, sure, let's kill the Talon. And then from all that, I was really close to scoring the left flag, but there was this one Cav model that I just couldn't do it with. So my Machine Wraith actually went and charged its rear because the way things were set up and was able to kill it, but that took me off the flag. So it's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't. If I wouldn't have gone the back strike, I wouldn't have actually even hit it. So it's better for me to have him be down one model. So otherwise on the right side, I'm still eating up that pocket of models he had there. I believe I kill off things like Gordon, not Gordon, Gorman and stuff like that. But you can see that mainly all I do otherwise is just bog him down and get things in his face. And I'm feeling pretty good here because for the one Toro, if it wants to get to me, it has to trample and then probably won't do that much. And the other one, it's stuck be behind rough terrain. And that's what I thought. And then I realized I was an idiot because I forgot my own caster and my own faction. And the fact that Chosen Ground is going to give them Pathfinder. So... Basically, I was like, hey, that one Toro, what if I gave it like a straight charge to get to my my uh, wreckers? And uh, we all know what's going to happen. So basically, between Ragman going up and also the choir giving you things plus two damage, uh, they're at damage like dice plus five. So yeah, that one comes in, kills the one wrecker. I now have two Toros in my face, and uh, that's super like mega bad. So uh, what are you going to do? Uh, otherwise, what happens on the right side there is that he's able to get in with the mule. So with that mule getting in there, it's contesting that flag. But the big thing is now is that I'm already at a spot where I'm up on scenario. I've been scoring my own zone the whole time. Every turn where I can, I'm contesting his zone. So that's just the thing there where I'm starting to get up and he's really feeling this pressure, especially on the right side. So really what happens now is that I just really lock that down even more. So with that advantage I already have, I kind of like use Thexus to move one of the Toros away with TKing it. I bring the other one closer because he can't do his objective anymore. It's too far away. Uh, I go and I just smash it down. So one Toro's away, one's far away. And also for my adrenal flooded dudes, yeah, they also did a lot of work for me as well. They brought down the one mule on the right that was contesting, so that's fantastic. I'm able to score that flag. I'm able to score my zone. I'm contesting his zone. I'm not scoring the left flag, but that's okay. Things are well now. I'm well ahead in scenario. He's starting to go down in jacks. He's kind of breaking up his formation, and I'm feeling pretty good. So on his turn, he is able to come over, uh, give that one Toro quicken, so that even though it was too far away to normally charge me or anything like that, and would have to trample, uh, well, when you have quicken, you're fast enough just to walk over and start stabbing. So again, at dice plus five, my last record goes down pretty quick, but the big thing is here is that he was not able to contest my right flag, and so with that, I'm just going up further on scenario, on my turn, we look at it, and it's really, really easy for me to win. I don't really have to do much whatsoever at all. Just really contesting his zone, uh, scoring on the left side after I kill the one model that's contesting. And basically at this point, my opponent just throws in the towel. So there you go. There's me returning to Texas, playing these new scenarios. And just to give a little bit of a tie-in for what my thoughts are on these is that they're really kind of supporting for the most part going wider so we have the one that we saw with the two circles on the outside uh, the one i didn't play is the one that has the rectangle zones actually touching the outside edge uh, that's the one that in our group we're calling it the where do i put my death clock scenario so with that that's kind of going to be interesting because 
for one part, you can say ambushers will be a lot more important now, but as well, it'll be just a lot more important to have an army that can break apart and go after multiple zones. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be one of those things that the game's gonna kinda like revolve like a clock, where first, you know, one's facing the other, and then one's gonna shift to the left, one's gonna shift to the right, and they're just kinda facing off now one side to the other. But the big thing that people were talking about that I think was interesting is the whole idea of just like, oh, Magnus 2 is gonna do amazing in these. Well, I don't really think so, because the biggest harm that comes to, or the biggest counter to Magnus 2's feet is going wide. You know, he only has a 12 inch control, he can only lock down so many things, and so when zones are further out, there's only so much you can actually do with those. Uh, as well, people who've played against it know that if you leave things outside, they can run in and contest. So between, you know, playing against people that would know the caster and the scenario itself, making it so you just can't control that many elements, I think it's now moving to a spot where it's not so much that what you want, but you want something that can push. Something like Thexus, something like uh, Gorton, something like those ones there, Kruger 2, that are pushing things away and getting fast scoring. Especially in this one here, in this incursion, will be a really big deal. Uh, people are saying like, oh, well, why don't you just do that before a Mirage? But the thing is, is like the way that the flags were set up, it was very hard to get control over the far flag. So. It never really happened, whereas having it more like this in the center, it's a lot easier to push and control all three flags on the same turn. So really, if you ever have a spot where you can control all three flags, score your own zone, and destroy their objective, hey, that's a doable thing and might be a way that you can win if you have those pushing feats. Now, like I said, there's now an objective that says you can't push or place one of these models, but I think again, because that's just one model, it probably won't be that big of an effect. I mean, if you go for it and say, haha, you can't move this one model, well, guess what my heavies are gonna go and kill? Of course, in this matchup here, there was Admonition, and then there was the Choir to stop Hex Blast. So there were the counters to the counters, but I think normally, if I really needed this to happen, and there was one model that I couldn't get rid of, I would just charge it with my Wreckers and kill it. So definitely something to think of. Uh, don't be thinking about things like Magnus 2. I mean, of course, there'll be spots where he'll be in a very good spot. Uh, but in general, with these ones where you have to go wider and more spread out, there's just not the same control that you'd be seeing there. I mean, for example, Magnus 2 could push really hard and say lock down maybe two of the flags, but then he couldn't really control the other. And then that's where the other opponent can have things to run and contest the flags that you did try and control, and then could try and score on the opposite flag. So, I mean, if there's what ifs and just a whole bunch of theory crafting here, but I really think that the casters that can push are going to have a big reemergence and seeing a lot more power. So there you go, folks. Those are my thoughts on the new scenarios and also two battle reports to see Texas back at it. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or anything, please post it down below. But otherwise, we'll catch you later. Bye.